We got the exclusive, 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 Stacy. Hello, my name is Stacey Robertson, and I am your host with the most exclusive and one of Atlanta's greatest ideas. Welcome to the exclusive, and may I say we have a dynamite show on you for you all today. As you can see, we are not in the studio, but we have taken the exclusive on the road. We're actually at Icon Studio here in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have the opportunity and the privilege to interview none other than the man himself, Ian Burke. Ian Burke is one of the music industry's hidden gem. He's responsible for some of the ATL's music movement of the 1990s. He is a former Southeast director of A&R for Electric Records, and he was responsible for signing R&B group Mista, featuring a young Bobby Valentino and even Akon. He is a former consultant for So So Death and so much more, all right? And trust me, when I say his bio is unlimited, well, you're going to get an opportunity to hear so much as this interview unfolds. So let's welcome to the show none other than Ian Burke. Ian, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, thank you. And what we're going to do, uh, how I do this, that, hey, I just like to jump right in. And so, um, where are you from? I am from uh, Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon, New York. Okay, and how did you? How in the world did you get to Atlanta, Georgia? I, I wanted to escape uh, to move into Florida. You know, my okay. parents retired uh, right after I graduated high school, and they wanted to move to Florida, and I really wasn't <laughs> feeling that move. Gotcha. So um, I heard a lot of good things about Atlanta, and how it was a progressive, up and coming city. Uh, and it was something that I wanted to be a part of, mm -hmm. so I, I decided to come into Atlanta. So that was roughly around, like, what was the time? Like, what year? I was 1984, October of 1984. Okay. Wow, so you got to see Atlanta at its best, like when right. I said the early, early. Right, wow. very early, very early on in the, in the career. Wow, okay, so let's talk about this. How did you break into the music industry? Um, I was attending DeVry, I was studying computer information systems, and um, uh, one of my classmates was playing bass in a local band, and they needed a roadie. I volunteered for the job, and I just loved being behind the scenes. I loved the, the whole energy behind it, and, you know, I, I decided that I wanted to, to make a, a career of it, so I just... I dove in it from that point of view, from that aspect. Okay, all right. So, how did you start getting into management? And who was the first artist or group that you ever worked with? Uh, you know what? I I um, I uh, fell into management. Okay. You know, it wasn't a career choice. It wasn't like I want to be a manager. Um, you know, I was uh, just dibbling and dabbling and. You know, I was experimenting with some girl groups and things of that nature uh, and trying to put together something that was exciting uh, for people, you know, during the mid to late 80s. Um, and yeah, that's that's basically how I fell into it now with the management. Um, Arrested Development was my first wow. management situation. Um, and it was only because I was the oldest one and, you know, with those guys, and I was older than those guys, and they just felt like, hey, you know, you know can you come in and, and really work with us? And I said, hey, why not? You know, so um, that that was my real first foray into the professional management scene. Wow. So when I think about your resume, especially uh, when I was reading your bio, um, just a brief of it, when I spoke about you being a former Southeast director of A and R for Electric Record, Electric Records. I mean, we talked about Sylvia Rome. Right. And, I mean, how, how, how did that happen? Well, um, you know, fast forward a few years, um, I started managing uh, people that were beginning to break. And uh, I had, at that particular point in time, organized Noise, the production team behind Outcast, and I had Outcast. 
and I had Escape. I had all of those groups at the same time and um, they were basically unknown when I had them and then all of a sudden they became, you know, the popular groups and Sylvia just took notice and just felt like I could find things that so, was that was that, that hadn't really flourished yet and turned it into something that, that could be super popular. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, so you said something there. So when we think of escape, we think of outcast and we think of TLC and all when I hear about their names, I do hear about you. Mm -hmm. So you managed them? Yes. At one particular time, yes. correct? Right. And so so that was pre Electra or that was That was pre Electra. Wow. That was uh uh, organized Noise and Outcast was definitely pre electric mm -hmm. um, We had did Player Ball and that did extremely well for mm -hmm. us. Um, Escape was also pre electric mm -hmm. um, and they came out with uh, the first single, uh, Just Kicking It, and that did extremely well for them. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, TLC was before the, both of those situations and, and that did amazing. So my name had been attached to a lot of things that were going on in the city, uh, a lot of positive things, and they decided to, uh, you know, she felt like I would be a good candidate mm -hmm. to run the a &R division in, in the Southeast area. Wow. Well, I definitely think she made a great, great, great choice. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. So let me ask you this. What all do you do as it relates to the music industry? What do you do? Oh, man, I... I <laughs> You know, I'm so absorbed in, in every different thing. I, I love all aspects of the industry, um, from being behind the scenes to, to being a little creative. The only thing I don't like is being in the studio with the artists because I don't like the process. You know what I'm saying? That's that's maybe weird or what have you, but I'm, I'm not into the whole process of recording and, and, and different takes and things of that nature. Um, so, but uh, I, I love uh, coming up with concepts and ideas and, uh, you know, spinning them out and seeing what works and what doesn't work, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, I, I can't put a, a firm finger on exactly what I'm into, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, but, you know, gotcha. I, I do a lot. You do, definitely do. So, let's move fast forward. What is your role here at Icon Studio? Uh, well, my friends own it, you know, um, Stone and Tasha Stafford. Um, Shout out to Stone and Tasha. Right, right. They, um, they, they, I've been with, affiliated with them for over 25 years. And um, when they decided to open the studio uh, uh, 11 years, 11 years ago, um, I was right there with them. Uh, and, you know, uh, for a short brief time, I went out west and worked a little bit out west. Uh, with Floyd Mayweather and, and some up and coming producers, the Avila Brothers. And when I came back to Atlanta, uh, I was looking for a job. You know, I was looking for a, a place to create a base for myself. Mm -hmm. And they offered me uh, Icon Studio, and you know, they allowed me to, to manage it for them uh, on a part time basis. And you know, I've been here ever since. Right, right. And for those who are watching, uh, this is always um, a special moment for me because this was my first, um, Ian gave me my first opportunity to Wellstone um, as it relates to getting into the music industry, as it relates to having an internship. So when I moved to Atlanta, this was my first opportunity. So I definitely wanted to say thank you. Absolutely. And um, Ian has been able to see my development as it relates to where I'm at now. And so I definitely don't take that lightly and I appreciate you. Mm hmm Yes. Yes. Okay, man. Thank you. As y'all can see, works never stop. <laughs> <laughs> it never stops. Definitely. So we got a couple more questions that we're gonna conclude, but let me ask you this. What do you have going on currently as it relates to the industry? Well currently um I just put together a, a great uh, female project, a female collective. I, I'm staying away from groups, the term group, because they're um, uh, a trio of solo artists mm -hmm. oh, wow. um, that 
uh, have come together like the Avengers for the common good. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like individually, they can do damage, but they're unstoppable when the three of them collect, mm. collectively get together. And um, they're teenagers. And uh, yeah, I, I put them together to, uh, with the help of uh, my friends, uh, London Maximus and Draylen, and uh, Draylen Levi, and we're, we're about to do some incredible things. You know what, and that's definitely what brought me to want to set up this interview because I got a chance to hear the young ladies on mm -hmm. social media and was blown away. Right. And first I had to look, I'm like, I was trying to say, I'm like, is this somebody that I missed or whatever? And then when I realized when I saw who the page was on, that's what helped me to understand what was going on. And I can tell you, these young ladies are going to be a problem. I'm going to tell you that right now. So definitely you have a great, um, you have a great thing going for sure. So. Uh, much success, much success. But of course, he's attached to it, okay? Um, what are your thoughts? And of course, our show focuses on entertainment, politics, as well as education. So at some point in the show, I have to always um, tie in what's important to me. Um, entertainment is always uh, on the forefront, but education is also a foundation. Mm -hmm. And I'm a strong believer that um, anything, you can't do anything without a teacher. Mm -hmm. Everybody is who they are because of a teacher. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama was president because of a teacher, you right. know? And so um, I'm very, um, you know, gone home about education in general. So what are your thoughts on education in 2019? Um, wow, I think that um, I, I still feel it's important. You know, I, I didn't take full advantage. I did well in, in my trade school studying commercial music. I, I stopped going to Dubai. But I, I do feel that it's very important, you know what I'm saying, that, that people understand the, the nuances of um, how to handle money um, and, and how to move forward with, with, with certain careers and definitely entrepreneurship, you know what I'm saying. And the only way that you're going to figure all of that out is, uh, well, the, the way that will help you figure it out. I won't say the only way. The way that will really help them, you feel it, figure it out is to educate yourself. And even if it's like, you know, look, getting books and reading, you know, uh, reading about how other people did it and so forth and so on, if that's your thing, because college isn't for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people learn uh, from practical experience and um, some people have that book knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Some people, like myself, I have a combination of both. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've, I've been out in the industry and I've learned from my failures. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really failures, they were learning lessons for me. And then, um, but I also have book knowledge, which, uh, which created the foundation for me. It was the one thing that I've learned is that there's no magic blueprint to get into this industry. You know what I'm saying? So you have to go by uh, experience and you know, you have to be creative in how you handle business. You know what I'm saying? Especially now, now more than ever. You know, you, you when you're working with artists, you, you want to work with brands. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's not just about the music anymore. As a matter of fact, the music's on the low end of the totem pole. So you have to figure out what other ways that you can create ancillary income for your clients. You know what I'm saying? So, but you have to educate yourself as to what's out there, what you can do, and how you can do it. So, I, I think that education is very important, you know, for folks, you know, both with college and getting your degree, and then other folks have other ways of educating themselves. That's right. But as long as there's an education component, that's right. You get your job. And, I'm, and I can definitely support that. So, why do you think HBCUs matter? I think that it's good where you know where folks can actually go to schools where they know they can see more of themselves at the school. You understand? Uh, my goddaughter went to Howard. She's graduating in May. You know what I'm saying? And I'm so proud of her. Um, and the the bottom line of it is, is that she chose a, a, a school that you know she can learn more about where she came from, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that would give her a sense of pride as well. You know what I'm saying? So 
I think that that's the importance of HBCUs. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's you know, it's, it's our pride thing. You know what I'm saying? So. Right. That's good. That's good. And I will go on record um, to say, um, been an alum of Clark Atlanta University as well as been a, a current student. But just uh, just to put on your radar. But um, any but that comes along, to, especially to Icon Studios that speak about, you know, getting the education while doing what they um, do as it relates to music. Um, if they have a bachelor's and they decide they want to get their master's, uh, Park Atlanta University does offer a MBA in sports okay. and entertainment management. Okay. So I just want to uh, make sure I give you that little bit of information as well. So how can someone get an internship here with you? Um, they will call, they will speak to a gentleman here named Bo. Mm -hmm. uh, the phone number here is 404-609-7064. Um, they are focused on, on engineers. Okay. So they would require uh, that you are interested in being an engineer okay. to, to, to enter here because they want to be able to um, make sure that you can benefit from the situation. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So they are looking for you know, people who have a desire to be engineers in the business. You know what I'm saying, so. All right, and last but not least, um, Ian, if you can let viewers know, how can you be rich? I can, look, uh, I'm on Instagram, um, official Ian, Bur official underscore Ian Burke. You can always reach out for me there. You can, you know, shoot questions to me there and so forth and so on. Um, or you can, if, if, if your budget allows, if you want to be able to sit down with me and have meetings with me, you know what I'm saying, there is a cost, <laughs> you know, there's a cost associated with right. that, but, um, you know, either way, I'm, I'm, I'm available and follow me on uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, follow me on um, Twitter, my Twitter name is um, at Orca, O-R-C-A-172, mm -hmm. and of course on Facebook, I can be found on Facebook. Okay. So then you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, to all our viewers, I hope that you were empowered. In fact, I know you were empowered today. And uh, whatever you can take away today that will help uh, move you on your journey um, within the music industry and as well in the world of education, um, you heard it here first. So definitely, thank you, Ian Burke, so much for Absolutely. this opportunity. Absolutely. And definitely, you are friends of the show. And you heard it here. You got the exclusive. We got the exclusive, 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 Stacey.